Hot. Sweet, sweet Cozy. sounds of sweet sounds of Tuesday. Love it. Love it. Let's get some ASMR in here. Ooh, this is like uh I can't wait to talk about this beer, by the way. It's a it's yes. a good one. Um it's son <laughs> of a gun. Nothing but head. Story uh, of my life. Story of my life. <laughs> Terrible story of my life. Well, guys, you know, after a tremendous two year anniversary, you know, there's got to be another side to this where we're, the road to three years starts today, right? Starts today. <laughs> it's, it starts today. And much like the, the one year long feud between John Cena and The Rock. I'm going to lay down a gauntlet tonight at the end of the show. Oh, my goodness. To build for one year. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm down for that. I, you know, and, and uh, you know, I know Angela is a wrestling fan. And, and uh, I, I, I would say that I'm a casual wrestling fan at this point. You know, it's, uh, I, I had one. I had my whole body out the door. But uh, but I've been kind of. Um, I wouldn't say uh, tippy toeing, but but uh, uh, it, it still got a little bit of my interest in some places. Some places, brother, brother, it's just like the mafia. Every time I try to get out, they pull me back in. Uh, <laughs> I think if I was just by myself uh, and I didn't worry about it, I, I probably wouldn't. But uh, I have friends that that are in it, around it, and uh, and, <coughs> and uh, Angela still goes. I mean, you still go to uh, live events all the time, right? Yeah, I'm actually going uh, a month from, uh, well, 30 days from today on June 3rd. I'll be going to AEW Rampage in Ontario. My first Look AEW live yeah. show, yeah. And that's crazy that it's the first AEW um, in West Coast, right? Uh, Wednesday, Dynamite technically is in um, uh, at the Forum. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'll be going Friday. I can't make it on Wednesday, so. Well, we all we all came here uh, and, and 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 came together because of pro wrestling, but we're here because of beer and baseball. So let's get to it. Absolutely. Hey, Michael here from Beer Baseball Blog, the adventures of craft beer and baseball. This is the Beer Baseball Blogcast, episode one hundred and five for May third, twenty twenty two. Wherever you are watching us live today, please give us a, a like and a comment. Let us know that you're out there, and as always, we'd appreciate. If you subscribe and turn on those notifications, some housekeeping before we start. If you would like to support us here at the Beer Baseball Blog, uh, you can uh, support us by going to our Etsy page. You can buy our stickers, buttons, and beer coasters and go to beerbaseball.store. If you'd like to become more involved with us and connected, uh, become a Patreon member for as low as $5 a month. Go to patreon.com forward slash beer baseball. I'm going to scroll our current and our most wonderful. And if you just give me a second, I just need to update one thing. And oh my gosh, here we go. Dude, updating on the fly. Brother knows how to work. That's right. <laughs> if I if I didn't let you know, you probably wouldn't have known. But uh, we're going to scroll everybody down there. We super appreciate all the support from everybody, from everybody watching, commenting, liking, going to our social media, watching our videos, uh, our pack opening videos. Uh, we're really re super blessed to have a great community. And it will keep on growing. Here's the lineup card for today. In the leadoff spot is the VP of Content Development here at the Beer Baseball Blog, Angelo Trinidad. How you doing, man? I'm doing fantastic. Wow. Two years plus one episode. Like you guys said, the road to three years starts today. And I'm just as excited today as I was on day one. Uh, looking forward to Tuesday, best night of the week, uh, to hang out with you guys, drink some craft beer, and talk a lot about baseball. Oh, right on. Let's do it. Uh, our field correspondent, senior research analyst, and social media manager at the Beer Baseball Blog, Kevin Lyon, is on the road right now, on the road to riches. That's, that's right. No, no, he's on the road to come back to his humble abode and, uh, and bless us with his baseball and craft beer knowledge. He'll be here shortly or at the same height. Uh, but hitting third is the Goodwill Ambassador and the Sultan of Swig here at the Beer Baseball Blog, Cowboy Jack Durango. Living on IPAs, getting Wu-Tang baked, live on the blogcast, snake oil and lizard king. 
you know that we're having a blast wasted away again on a tuesday night looking for our lost kevin lion some people think that there's a mascot to blame but i know it's my own damn fault Woo, ladies and gentlemen, the Billy Bean of fantasy baseball. They call me Jackie Lady Shoes, Big Match Jack, Jackie Ball Game, the hashtag under the influencer, the Tucson Tornado, the Outlaw Burger, and the Rooster. Welcome to Tuesday Night. Let him hear it. Yes. Wow. <laughs> wow. So inspired. How, how can we follow that up? I mean, uh, as I say, you know, this is a member. We're in the preliminary of, of the show. How are we going to follow that? <laughs> it's only going up from here, brother. Oh, is it? All right. I don't run out of high spots. <laughs> Cow Cowboy Jack just walked through the curtain and looked at match two and said, follow that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, and, and uh, Jimmy Bobby, it's turning in his undug grave. Absolutely, <laughs> he's just rolling around in it. Uh, but one day he will be there, I'm sure. Um, uh, guys, uh, you know, we always have this part of the show, which I'm super excited about, right? It's what are you drinking, right? So, I want to know, Cowboy Jack Durango, off your high spot. After your 450 off the top rope, to the floor, through a table, through a flaming table, uh, what beer do you got? So in keeping with tonight's island-themed song, which was actually provided to me by my friend uh, Thunder Chunky Martinez, appreciate it, I am having an Ocean Air Hazy IPAs. And for all the water babies out there, if you have your feet in cold ocean, you got your butt in the sand. This is the hazy that you want to drink. And uh, it's from our good friends, Pizza Port, who reportedly have good pizza, but they have better beer. Ladies and gentlemen, I would highly, highly, highly recommend this. I picked it up over at uh, the Peoria Tap Room from the Good Brothers. I think if you're in Phoenix, you should stop in. They have the Best selection of hard to find IPAs in Arizona. So, good brothers at uh, Cactus Tap Room, we love you. Yeah, this is a uh, this is one I haven't seen. I Pizza Port is pretty readily available um, wherever. I, I mean, I know it's over by where Angelo is for sure, um, and it's up here as well in Los Angeles. But I have not seen this one. This one looks uh, really good. And uh, as as I said, usually they come in four packs. Pizza port always comes in six pack, which is yes. amazing. <laughs> yes. And I am uh, well on my way to getting brothered up off of this. Dude, I'll tell you what, it's got that, that fruity aftertaste that is just what I love about a good hazy, man. Yeah. This is right up there with uh, a Sloha IPA. Oh, right on. Really good. Nice. Try it out. Yeah. I definitely got to keep an eye out for this one. I mean, uh, my local Trader Joe's has, you know, several pizza port six packs there but i've not seen this so i'll keep an eye out for this this definitely looks like it'd be right up my alley yeah pizza port puts out a lot of beers mm -hmm. and uh so like it, it just what just when you think you've seen them all it's like they one will, like this will pop up like oh man i gotta get that one I, I definitely uh speaking of hazies angelo you have a hazy as well yeah so tonight i will be drinking and i'm enjoying the stone hazy ipa so this one is uh uh, it's a relatively newer beer from Stone Brewing. They're um, known for their traditional IPA. They also have their Tangerine Express Hazy IPA. That was the first Hazy IPA they released. Uh, so this one is one of the newer ones, 6.7% uh, ABV, 35 IBU. This one has El Dorado Azaka and Sabro Hops. And this has a... Um, Flavors and aromas of orange, lemon, melon, mango, and pineapple. Um, and this one is described as um, less bitter than our other IPAs, but still blooming with bold hop flavors. And uh, this one is very refreshing. And I definitely recommend it if you guys uh, see it out there. Yeah, I, I have not uh, seen a stone uh, brewing uh 
beer that I, I've not wanted to try. So um, I love it. They're a little bit hoppier than usual. I was wondering if, if, if it's a little bit hoppier than, than a regular hazy. Uh, this one, it's definitely a little bit hoppier, but uh, it's not, I mean, it's 35 on the IBU, so it's not as bitter. So um, they were able to keep the hoppiness and uh, amidst, you know, not making it as bitter as their typical IPAs. Because I think I had before the exotic destinations ipa mm -hmm. um and that one is like a 70 ibu yeah yeah um and very hoppy and, and also very bitter but uh this is a almost like a lighter version of that more juicier too so okay yeah Dude, that, i mean it looks good that can too that art is so i love dude love stones cans man like i can't walk past a, an arrogant bastard i just i have to buy it because it's <laughs> Like this, so if cool. you ever if you ever come out here, Jack, um, you know we have to definitely go to the uh, well. They they have one. Oh gosh, I'm a, someone. Uh, Ed, I know it's out there watching uh, right now. Uh, where where was the stone that we went to? The big uh, one that had like all the gardens. This is really beautiful. Um, like that garden. one should be that one should be an Escondido, maybe. That's that's probably what it is, right? And mm -hmm. uh, it's a, it's a huge like piece of land, and it's like you can get lost in there. It's like going really? around. It's really it's beautiful. Um, how, how close is that to say like where Kevin lives? Um, it's it's probably about an hour and a half. Yeah. Escondido's um, in nor wow. north North County, San Diego. So yeah. yeah oh wow. Kevin, yeah. So from so, Kevin about from Kevin about an hour and a half from me about an hour. That's a, that's a, that's on a, a, a no a good I day. Mean, on a good day. Yeah. For, if we if we get there too if we go too late, it could be the traffic could be pretty bad. Right. Point point being, I have a very good friend in San Diego that I would love to impose upon. How close would it be to San Diego? An hour. Yeah. Yeah. Oh crap. Okay. So yeah. No, I yeah. Can't you, have, call you have to make a commitment to one or the other, basically. Yeah. Dang it. Yeah. But if you come up to Pasadena, they actually have a tap room that's over by uh, Old Pasadena. So um, it's it's kind of a hidden spot, and it's right off the train. You can actually take the train there. You we literally could probably uh, take the train south, like we'd stop at the Stone Tap Room, um, get something, and then go down to Chinatown Station. Get off there. There's uh, Boomtown. There's Highland Park, and then we could walk to Dodger Stadium. So they're like, there's a whole. Uh, there's a whole bunch of them uh, breweries right there. So it's like, and but it's a stone. It's a it's a hidden gem. Like no, not a lot of people know about it. But it's in, in Pasadena. Huh. All right. Well, yeah. let's do that. Come on, let's do it. Enough of this. Enough of this uh, uh, stuff. No, nah, we can't do it. No, we're gonna do it. <laughs> um, my beer tonight is okay. So we've been on the hazy train for a long time here, right? So, and I, I've definitely, uh, I, I love hazies, I love IPAs, but I'm going a little different. I'm, I'm, I, I'm, uh, you know, the catcher is uh, putting the the two signal down, so I'm throwing, I'm throwing a curve at you right here. This is the Viva Le Beaver from Belching Beaver Brewery in Oceanside, California, a 7.5 ABV, no IBU. It's a sweet milk stout. Mm. And uh, the great thing about this is it is a Mexican chocolate peanut butter stout. Yes. So, and and it's uh, the reason why I did this because uh, Cinco de Mayo is this week. So I wanted something uh, in line with that. Uh, I have not had a stout I don't think I've ever had a stout on the show. Um, but this one is uh, loaded with notes of creamy peanut butter, cinnamon, and coffee. This decadent milk stout is is the perfect dessert beer to finish off your meal. Uh, I, I'm starting with it. <laughs> and um, it's, it's their highest rated beer, re receiving numerous gold and silver medals. So sink your teeth into this liquid chocolate treat. I do not taste the hints of peanut butter. They might be, it, it might be hints of peanut butter, but it's not like super strong. But um, uh, I always say like when, whenever Kevin and I go out and we would always have like something like this last and it was, and I would say it's a, it's a, it's a, a go home beer uh, for sure. And, uh, and again, I, I have not had this. Um, I've never had a Porter on the show. So or, I'm sorry, stout uh, on, on the show. So I'm, I'm excited. And, uh, Belching Beaver was like one of the first breweries I went to, uh, when we started getting into craft beers, like around 2014 or so, um, we, we took a, a trip and, and went down to all there and, and it's great that all their beers are super cool. 
Can we um, uh, see the see what it looks like? Oh yes, absolutely. So let me. Um, I'm here. Uh, I'm take this out real quick. I'm gonna move that. Yeah. So it is. <laughs> yeah, it is dark and chocolatey. It's really so the the chocolate is pretty prevalent. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I can't wait. To like you can that. you can smell like from far away. You can smell it. It's yeah. Oof, it's it's good and um it's it's not. It's one of those beers. Like I, I'm not. I'm no cowboy Jack Durango. I probably couldn't drink like four or five of these. Um, so like one, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. They're not. They're definitely not crushable. That's um, awesome. Hey, um, can I can I ask you a question? Please. Oh, like what? It's super funny that like craft breweries can get away with culturally insensitive material because they handle it so well. Like. N nobody's gonna get outraged by this right like because it's it, no nobody is because it's great beer it like dude it, i it's love craft, i love this i love the sense of humor of of craft breweries man it's yeah. so great yeah and it, it's funny because and i i keep on wanting to every time i see the the net so viva I, the way i keep on i can't say it uh, i have to say it in in espanol because okay I'm going to super date myself right now. There was a leave it to beaver episode oh, where there was a, a, uh, a, a kid from Mexico came to beaver's class and he didn't speak any English, but beaver wanted to uh, befriend this kid and tried to speak Spanish to him. And uh, it didn't work out so well because of course, Eddie Haskell told him to say something to him. And then it was, uh, I think he said like he had the face of a pig or something like that. So <laughs> uh, controversy back there. Okay. But, but um, but the his name was Chewy, by the way, and uh, and Chewy yeah. and Chewy used to call. He goes, "Hey, la beaver, he he go beaver." So whenever I see "Viva la beaver," <laughs> his name is beaver right now. It's "Viva la beaver." So um, yeah, I had to put I had to put the accent on it. So uh, thank you for indulging me. That was a a hugely oh. dated reference, possibly seventy five years in the making. Sure, dude. <laughs> like it, it makes me wonder how you pulled that up like that. <laughs> I know that you're not that old, brother. Just an encyclopedia in his head. Encyclopedia yes. reference point. It's because sure. I was a latchkey kid, and and uh, I grew up on TV. That's why. There you go. And guess what, man? It might have been painful at the time, but we are reaping the benefits now. Yeah. Right? <laughs> we look super smart now, right? Yeah. <laughs> it is paying off, dude. Thanks, mom and dad. <laughs> I, I used to eat um, mayonnaise and, and, and mustard sandwiches on white bread, but now oh. I'm going to show everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna cry now, dude. Like this. All not right, even, moving on. Moving not on. even a slab of bologna in there. Come no. On. Oh, I, I, we used to. Yeah, we used to throw that. Uh, we used to do fried bologna. We used to throw it in. I love fried. Oh, okay. Oh, we're going. We're going. It's gonna be like a uh, confession time here in a few. Yeah, I better, dude. Uh, better move welcome, on. Welcome, <laughs> welcome, welcome to Bologna Talk, the new segment <laughs> of the baseball block. <laughs> Goodness gracious! Well, when Kevin gets here, he's going to talk about this radiant. Uh, rip uh, brewing beer. I definitely want to hear more about this one, but let's go on to this. This is this day in baseball history for May 3rd. Give me just a second here. All right, here we go. May 3rd, 1941 in his first major league start Cardinal rookie Henry Gord Gornicki throws a one-hitter beating Philadelphia at Shy Park 6-1. to one. The 30-year-old right-hander, who will only win 15 games in his career, gives up the lone hit to rookie outfielder Stanley Benjamin. So this is pretty amazing. His first major league start, you know, throws a no-hitter, right? So I started thinking to myself, um... Has there been anybody else recently or in the past like that I remember that in their first major league start or even in their first start ever, right? So as I did the research, um, 22 major league rookies have pitched a no-hitter since 1901. Four pitchers have thrown a no-hitter in their first major league start. Two others have done it in their second major league start. So the first one was Bumpus Jones. Of Dude. the Cincinnati Reds, who threw a no hitter on October fifteenth, eighteen ninety two, in his first major league game. 
Hashtag Bumpus, dude. Let's get it trending. <laughs> Hashtag Bumpus. Way to go. Uh, uh, Ted Brightstein, uh, as a Brightenstein, I think it is, uh, pitched a no hitter in his first major league start on October 4th, 1891. However, it was not his first major league game. He later threw his second no hitter on April 22nd, 1898. On May 6, 1953, Bobo Holloman pitched a no-hitter for St. Louis uh, for the St. Louis Browns in his first major league start, also not his first major league game. And um and on I, I totally forgot about this one. On August 14th, 2021, Tyler Gilbert of the Arizona Diamondbacks pitched a no-hitter against the San Diego Padres in his first major league start and his fourth appearance, his first major league game came 11 days before his no hitter. So didn't I like, told you, didn't like three, three teams pitch a no hitter against San Diego. Last year. <laughs> it, it, exactly. Yeah. They, oh man, they were, they were and, and they, they got their first, they got their first no hitter, uh, Joe yeah. Musgrove through the, yeah. through the, they, they were involved in a lot of no hitters. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, it's, it's, yeah. I, I forgot about the Tyler, Tyler Gilbert one. I totally, I did not. Yeah. And I looked at him. I, I think he's back in the minors now. And the the common theme, I mean, um, Kevin was live uh, live attended uh, three out of the, these four no hitters. So. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. So I thought that was pretty cool. And and just thinking about it, you know, just like oh wow, um, you know, in his first major league start, and it just kind of got me down this road. And and uh, I do this a lot on, on this day in baseball this time. So May 3rd, 1975, after taking the mound against the Rangers in the second inning at Arlington Stadium, Nolan Ryan finds a rubber snake and a giant rubber crab when he reaches for the rosin bag. Wow. The Angels right-hander who gets the victory when the Halos beat the uh, Texas Rangers 4-2 to two, suspects opposing manager Billy Martin for the shenanigans, calling the prank a little league stunt. Okay, so... When I when I read about this, I go, there has to be more to this. Like he just didn't put a a snake out there for sure. no reason, right? Right. Or, or and, and a little crab. Like I'm like, what, what what could this possibly be, right? So as I did my research, Nolan Ryan used to use snake oil to heal injuries. Hmm. Incli uh, inclined initially as a young pitcher towards using the homespun remedies, Ryan used treating a sore right elbow in his first year as an uh, as an angel by rubbing rattlesnake oil on the joint. And I, and I was like, wait a second. I mean, like we all hear about the snake oil salesman. Like, did he get <laughs> did he get taken by someone? Like, uh, did he buy some magic beans too? I don't. You know, like, okay, so. That got me down this road of thinking to myself, okay, let's let's start going. What are some snake things in baseball, right? Because like in football, like Kenny uh, Kenny Stabler was the snake. Uh, Jake, there was uh, Jake, Jake the snake, a uh, plumber. Plumber, yeah, yeah, for the Cardinals and and Sun Devils. But I but um, then I started thinking about it. The Cobra, the Cobra. Dave Parker comes to mind, and and if. Uh, Jack, uh, Jack and, and Angela, I want to know, I, I, do you know what his shirt is in reference to? It's, it's in reference to our first piece of merch, dude. We need to make that shirt. <laughs> Actually, it's already been taken. Someone's already done it, but, oh, um, but we, no, we, I don't, we, I don't know what that's referencing, referencing. Okay. It's me and the boys. Yes. Hold on. No, I got it. I got it going in my head. Okay, go, go, I, I, I can hear it. Go for it. Go for it. Hear any noise. It's just me and the boys, but bopping throws me off, man. If you hear any noise, it's just me and the boys grooving. Da -dum, da -dum. Parliament. Okay. Dude. Yes, that's it. So it's uh ice cube. Did a, a gimmick with Parliament Funkadelic, and it's uh, it's called Bop Gun. Okay, okay, Bop yes. Gun. And if you listen to that song, um, it's uh, "Let Me Ride," uh, Dr. Dre, right? Yes. Um, it, it's that samples in there. So if you ever, really? if, kids, if you ever want to know where all your samples come from, um, just go into. Yep, there it is. There's the shirt. It's um, an homage. Yes, exactly. So uh, I was, I knew it was either that or Super 70. I couldn't remember which one it was. 
Um, but if you want to know where all your rap samples come from, you can pretty well guarantee it's either Funkadelic, Parliament, or James Brown. So, uh, but Hell that's, yeah. you know, that's, that's, that's one right there. So then I started going down. I'm like, wait a second. Then yeah, I started like great. looking at, at Dave Parker. I mean, there is so much uh, brilliance here. I mean, from smoking in the dugout to uh, in 1978 when he, in a home plate collision uh, with Mets catcher John Stearns, he returned only a few weeks later, but then he had a series of masks that he was wearing uh, to protect it. Now, I'm not sure if, if, if a ball went off uh, that, that hockey mask, I'm sure it would hurt just as much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for <Right>. sure. <laughs> hey, man, J- Jason made it through like, 14 movies with a with a hockey mask. <laughs> exactly. Dave Parker's got this. Plus, it looks super gnarly, dude. Like it's it's awesome. He was the original he hate me, bro. <laughs> oh my god. So so much goodness. And and uh his career was actually cut short. He should have been a major uh, a Hall of Famer, but um, but uh but then I started thinking about this and I'm like, wait a second, there's a pirate uh left fielder who made this great catch. Um, this weekend, um, uh, Jake, the snake Marisnik here playing for the uh, Mets and, uh, but he, and, uh, yeah, not, not playing so good right here, but I, I had, I, this was the best picture I literally could get of him, <laughs> but he, he made this outstanding. If you look up Jake Marisnik on, uh, Google picks, it's all, all of him like diving for balls. He's, he's like amazing, but they call him Jake the snake Marisnik. Um, so, so then, then, of course, wait, wait, before we go one more layer, yeah, go here, for it. I have one quick question. It caught my eye in uh, in the Dave Parker smoking in the dugout photo. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's they're both ha- they both have the pirate hats, but the star is in a different place. Does that mean so, anything? It doesn't mean so much the placement, but um, those were Stargell stars. So Willie Stargell would give um give them uh if they made a good play or they did and, and then they, they would fill them out you can see like later in the year they they filled out uh, Got it. all okay. around the cap and stuff like that so right. you would get them for Best like ball. you know like uh, maybe if you uh game winning rbi you know in, in the bottom of the ninth you know you get a stargill star wow all right i'm gonna hashtag do the research on that there that you go great. i hope that i hope i'm right on that one but i i think that i am um so marisnik you know is a pirate now but but let's let's keep it with snakes um but but keep it maybe uh maybe reptiles would be uh, more accurate so a lot of people don't know that miles michaelis now pitching for the cardinals um is nicknamed the lizard king no not because he's a big doors uh, uh john morrison fan um he got the nickname when on a bet he ate a lizard during a bullpen during the 2011 arizona fall league game and uh, it was posted on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> so, but let's wrap this all up. How does it come back to snakes? Uh, Miles Mikolas uh, lost to the Diamondbacks this weekend. Boom in your face, Miles. <laughs> <laughs> why, why don't you eat another lizard nerd? <laughs> <laughs> He's been pitching great, actually. Uh, but the, but no run support. Um, uh like a that I, that can be said for all around baseball, but bro, the best the best part about that video on YouTube is he pours Mountain Dew all over the lizard to make it more palatable. <laughs> it's I didn't know that. I probably I probably, I'd probably go, go down dry. I mean, whatever you can do, he did eat it though. No, and then he chews it up, dude. That's a psycho. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it actually helped him because I know that I think after this. He actually went to pitch in Japan. So yeah, no. they, they have all those delicacies, right? Yeah. And, uh, it made it a lot easier, I'm sure. Dude, he went, he, he did, he did three years in Japan for the, the Yomiuri Giants That's in it. Nippon professional baseball. Yep. And in three years, he pitched to a 31 13 record with a 2.1 ERA in 62 starts. There you go. Yeah. That's why the Cardinals picked him up. And uh, they, they got a couple of the, uh, uh, pictures from there so yeah thank thank you ed yes i brought it all thank you yes. epic storytelling <laughs> hey, can, can oh, i get some love for that baseball knowledge brother? I, I, this, it's good yes. I, I, that's fantastic nicely done <laughs> uh, i don't have my uh, applause sound effect uh, next time next time <laughs> um 
May 3rd, 1979, in a 6 to 1 defeat to the Brewers, outf Indian outfielder Bobby Bonds hits his 300th home run off Moose Haas, a great name uh, to definitely uh, remember. Um, Moose Haas uh, plays for the Brewers. Get your beers ready. Uh, to become the only the second player in Major League history to steal at least 300 bases and hit uh, 300 home runs. Uh, a lot. Of, everybody talks about Barry Bonds, of course, right? Because yeah. he was the first 400, or was he? Was he 300, 300? I, I was at uh, Conseco. I, I'm I'm lost on this. Um, but Willie Mays was the first to accomplish the feat on July 4th, 1961. So 300, 300. Right, and then at 93, the feat was uh, re replicated by Willie Mays Hayes. <laughs> or not. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Ow. <laughs> Eat that. <laughs> and speaking of Giants, May 3rd. So these both happened on May 3rd, 1980. So remember when we saw this card last week in Baseball Card Sharks? Willie McCovey uh, homers for the final time, a solo shot off Scott Sanderson in the fourth inning uh, of the Giants' 3-2 to loss to Montreal at Olympic Stadium. I want to throw out that, that Kevin got this totally correct. He said that, that Willie McCovey has 521 home runs. On this card, we said that it had 520. Mm -hmm. And he said, and, and I said, um, did he hit just like one home run uh, during this time? And that was it. The 42 year old future hall of fame, first baseman who first hit um, his first uh, of 521 round trippers in 1959 joins Red Sox legends uh, legend, Ted Williams as the only other major leaguer to Homer in all four decades or I'm sorry, in four different decades. So, yeah, so he, he was, I, it, and when we were looking through these cards, in fact, when we play baseball card shark today, there's some names you're like, oh my God, that person's still around. And uh, Willie McCovey to be this far in, in the 80s is pretty amazing. Wow. So, but also on May 3rd, 1980, Ferguson Jenkins becomes the uh, only the fifth major league uh, hurler to win 100 games in each league when he defeats the Orioles three to two. The Ranger right hander uh, joins Al Orth. Cy Young, Jim Bunning, and Gaylord Perry in accomplishing the feat. So, uh, Dude, Ferguson Jenkins, Canada's yeah. one of Canada's greatest athletes. Way to way to go, my lovely baseball lumps, Fergie Jenkins. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Angela, how, um, what uh, do, do you follow? Um, do, do you follow anybody on uh, on social media? Uh, I don't. I only have uh, Facebook. So okay, because uh, actually, uh, Ferguson Jenkins is pretty active on Twitter, which uh, sounds crazy, but it's I actually think we did. This is going on in our baseball group chat, right? Uh, it might be. Uh, he's yeah. he he like gives away like uh, autographed cards all the yeah. time. Oh, cool! That's awesome. Speaking of old timers, oh, Kevin man. Lyon. I decided to show up. Amazing segue. <laughs> yes, dude. What a segue. <laughs> hello. hello. Hello, hello. All right. We get grumpy, Kevin Lyon. Tonight. Oh, gosh. I'm literally sitting in my exit for five minutes because I was so backed up for my exit for some reason. And a wreck. I'm sorry. Can you just hit it for me so I don't have to do it? <laughs> I'm too tired <laughs> and too sober to do that Kevin. myself. Kevin, I love your shirt, dude. Now crack a beer and get brothered up, dude. Yeah, don't ruin, yeah, it. Don't ruin it. Don't ruin the show. <laughs> I'm just standing back. Oh, we're going right back to it. Uh, so this is a collaboration between uh, Radiant Beer Company. Shocking, we have a Radiant. Uh, with Rip Beer Company out of uh, Huntington Beach, California. It's called We Can Rip On That. So if you if you can see here, they're the rip. You know, they do the pun name on the rip, and then it's all... Artworks like the guitarist, and the, I see we had a bass player in there, and the, you know the pizza guy is because um, Rip just opened up a pizzeria in Huntington Beach as well as in addition to their actual location. So this is a bad man pajama here. This is a nine point eight percent double dry hopped West Coast I, West Coast double IPA. So turn it up, drop some bars, and slap in the bass. 
See, I needed this moment for the boppin' earlier. Uh, turn it up, drop some bars, and slap in the base of this euphonious collaborative project between two West Coast besties. Radiant and Rip love making award-winning hoppy hits, so we came together to pump up the hops as much as possible in a double dry hop, double IPA made with Simcoe, Motueka, Mosaic, and Columbus Cairo. Oh, right. It's, it even says on the bottom here, I love this, can fresh the week of April 25th. Oh, nice. perfect. I like that. I like that, brother. And I had this last week, a uh, friend of the show, Steve Whistler. I will say his old wrestling name for referee, you know, Steve, Steve Dalton, Dalton Jr. Jr. Steve Dalton Jr. Yes, Dalton he met Jr. up with me yeah. and he was just like, oh my gosh, this is great. I'm like, yep. <laughs> this is the way his first night radio, and this was his favorite that he had that night. This is the beauty. This isn't their first collaboration with Rip, right? They had another it actually one. Actually, it is. You might be thinking of Pizza Port. They did one with Pizza Port. Pizza last Port year. did one with Rip. Yes. That's what it was. You're absolutely exactly. right. Yeah. Cheers, guys. I got to catch yeah. up. Luckily, I have a 9.8, so I'll be caught up in about oh, 20 Oh, yeah. Minutes. You'll be caught up in no time. <laughs> There's my brother. There he is. There he is. Get it, big boy. That All right. Horrible. Hey, thank you for remembering the Willie Cuffey, McCuffey bit, by the way. Thank yeah, you. that was that was that was impressive. Like I couldn't. <laughs> how did you remember like five twenty one? I you know, I was looking at a lot of books as a kid, so I pretty much remembered what most of those guys had in that time period. You know, you know seven fifty five, seven fifteen, six sixty. I think is Willie Mays. I don't remember Reggie finished up. I want to say like five eighty something. I think Jimmy Fox is five twenty one. So you don't get me started. See, it's like you say you can't get this stuff out. Of, you gotta get this. Stuff I know. Out of your it's, head. it's it's it, it's it, and, and it's funny because like all these things like trigger it. Like you just you just basically just want to get it out of your head. It's yeah. you know because no one you know all these numbers and and that's the great thing about baseball. It's like just like there's all these like crazy numbers like um you know and you and remember like uh, well I mean I'll, I'll save it for later. I mean like like I that's what I want to kind of instill in this like. You know, when we do like baseball card sharks, when we do uh, this day in baseball, even when we do like baseball trivia, it's basically to get familiar with all these names that you they may not even be like on anybody's radar. And you know, we're just well, come on, what was the guy's name that I hung out with in the 1800s? Bumpy, what the hell is that? Oh, was that guy's um, name? Bumpus, Bumpus. 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 So, like, yeah, come on, we got we got hashtag Bumpus. Bumpus Jones. And, and it's Bumpus like, you Jones. know, how would you, who's talking about Bumpus Jones? All right. <laughs> I want, you know, no offense to Tyler Gilbert, but I'd rather talk about Bumpus Jones than, uh, than Tyler Gilbert. Sorry. Bumpus. Tyler. Bumpus, Bumpus Jones. Bumpus. Right. Um, like that needs to be a character in like, you know, like an old black exploitation film. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, that, just, that just took a, a left turn. <laughs> well, I'm saying on the mean streets of Chicago, watch sure. out. Bumpus Jones. Oh, hey. dude. Like shaft, yeah, oh, yes. exactly. Exactly. Bumpus, you <laughs> damn right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so let's get into baseball card sharks. Oh, Kevin with a with a big win last week. Look at that, just adding his stats right there. Look at that. Look at uh, that. I don't like being tied with you for the most losses. I'm going to see if I can rectify that tonight. Yeah. What, by losing so you can have the most losses? <laughs> Either what, dude, one way or the other, I'm going to be right. One way right. or another. All right, here we go. So this is baseball. Look at me. Art look art. at me. Te look, look, I'm teetering on the Mendoza line. <laughs> All right. As, as you you definitely are. <laughs> My goodness. Yeah, it's it perilous. Your, it, it, it's, your back is up against the Mendoza line. I'm it, trying to get the, I'm trying to get the Ted Williams 407. Come on. There you go. Wow. All right. <laughs> wow so these are the baseball card shark rules we're going to draw 11 cards uh eight go on the board three on your bench we start from the bottom we're going to pick a category and i'm going to pick the category uh which is all-time wins we're going to do uh pitchers this time so all-time career wins and uh let me uh do a couple of things here i'm going to take this away and then i'm going to add this Move this. Oh, yeah. All right. So, All right. Kevin, I mean, you, you won last time, but uh, yes, do you want to go first or do you want to – who do you want to uh, delegate to go first? Cowboy Jack always likes to lead off. Yeah? So go ahead, Cowboy Jack. Give it to me, Daddy. All right. Let's yeah. go. Cowboy Good Jack. Idea. Let's – Barlow. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, dude. <laughs> Even I'm not that harsh. Good job. Yeah. Thanks, Angela. Yeah, no, hey, I mean, it, it's when, when I'm up against it, when I'm up against a Mendoza line, I ain't got nothing to lose. Yes. At this point. <laughs> well, um, yes. Uh, Ed says a uh, Kevin hitting a whopping 381 George Brett numbers. Speaking of George Brett, uh -oh. stop it. 
Here Ken is Brett. the brother of yep. George Brett. This is Ken Brett. Actually, uh, he was supposed to be the Brett you were supposed to yep. put your money on because yep. uh, he was the more talented uh, baseball player. Uh, but Ken Brett, uh, Ken Brett also in um, no, Miller Lite. Oh, he's on Fantasy Island. Fantasy Island, yes. He's on Fantasy Island baseball episode. And also there's a good, a really good uh, Miller Lite commercial of him. I'm sure you can find that on YouTube. There Dude. you go. I had no idea there was a leaping Lanny Poffo of the MLB. <laughs> and there was another years. brother, too, they had who I think played minor league ball, if I remember right. Oh, wow. Well, was. we just talked about him, Canada's greatest athlete. Here's Ferguson Jenkins. Oh, uh, Fergie fine. to you. Yeah, milkshake brings all the boost to me. Uh, that's uh, that's Khalees, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's, all, it's, all, it's all the same to me, dude. <laughs> same, same. Oh, my gosh. Um, I believe um, did did Clayton Kershaw pass this man for all time Dodger strikeouts? This is Don Sutton. I know Clayton he just got the first place, and I wouldn't be surprised if he's second. Yes, sir. Yep. And that's Don Sutton who played with several teams. I, mean, I always like to mention it. I saw his two hundred win live in person at the Big A back in there. You go six or eighty seven. Bro, and, if uh, I if I could go back in time, I would become his PR manager by having him grow out sideburns and but renaming Sutton? them Sutton chops, dude. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yep. You wish you could see it. you wish you could see that perm under that hat. It's, you know, solid, well, solid perm. Well, snakes alive. Uh oh. It's Nolan Ryan. <laughs> wow. Still oh playing for the angel at this point. I'm glad Jack's first. Don Sutton versus Nolan Ryan. That's 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 a very that's a that's a tough oh, one. Oh, too easy, drill sergeant. In okay, 1980, sir. 1980s tops, get out of town. One of uh, uh I believe he's the only uh, the only brother combination to uh throw no hitters. Um, him and his brother Ken threw no hitters. This is Bob oh, Porsche for wow. the Cardinals. I didn't know that. That there you go. I can't. This is one of the this is one of the cards that I could not believe this guy was still around in 1980. You're gonna love this one, Kevin. All right, Mickey Lolich pitching oh for the gosh. Padres. <laughs> okay, unbelievable. Yeah, he, was he was on the uh, Dodgers. I mean, uh, the Tigers at, in the late uh, 60s. Yeah, he was on the 68 World Series team. Yep. Yeah. Um, this guy had a a a flash of a career, but it was a great one. This is Mark yes. the Bird. Bidwitch. Okay, the bear the bird. That's he took it. Baseball by storm in '76. That's right. This is gonna this and and to end it out your your top card right here uh, before we go to the bench. Um, this is this is one of my trip people up. This is Jim Kitty Cot. Oh, <laughs> oh man, Jim Cot. That's a Yankee. That, oh, as a so, Yankee. <laughs> so disco machine. Yo, I'll go ahead and tell you right now. I don't need a bench. Let's start the game. Oh. <laughs> all right so uh, well let, i still have to in, in fairness i have to draw a bench just yes. to have it here for the next card well why don't you just lay three face down okay i'll do that I'll, I'll, no but then you can see the stat hey you want to see the stats you can really read those if stats. you can read these stats i i, yeah, I, I deserve a win to you. <laughs> mike needs a mike needs a looking glass to read the stats <laughs> i have this Put that over just a little bit Kevin, you are 3,200 years old, bro. If you can read those, you win the game, dude. Go All for right. it. So Ken Brett um, has 82 victories so far. He's played with the – oh, my God. Like, he he's played since 67, which wow, is crazy. So yeah, he's, wow, he's that much, he was that much older than George then. George, yeah. George was like 74, 75. Yep. All right, so the number is 82. Ferguson Jenkins – Higher or lower than 82? Fergie in, but this is 1980s, or is it 81? 1980. 80. Fer, Fergie's been around a while. That's a wily veteran. He's going to be a little bit higher. I would agree with that. I think it's twice as much. Yeah, yeah 247. Yeah, there you go. He just, we, we, we just referenced he's the first player to have a hundred wins in both American and the national. There you go. They yeah. see Angelo's paying attention. A Angelo, do you know how much I drink, dude? <laughs> <laughs> how many of those cans have you gone through so far? Four. <laughs> oh my gosh. So how 247, 247. This is going to be, this is actually tough. It, it uh, is. 247, it Don is. Sutton, higher or lower? If you had a bench, you could go to the bench, but you don't. 
I don't need to go to the bench. I never go to the bench. The bench is for cowards. Don <laughs> Sutton. Hey, I won last week with that bench. Lower. Slightly lower. Good job. Lower because than 246. Being, because you were listening, you heard me say I saw his 300 win in person in 1987. So good job. So 217. Nicely Woo! done. 217. Woo! Closer to the... Uh-oh. It's the one. Nolan Ryan. Nolan Ryan. And Higher or lower, he's playing for the Angels right here. So this yeah. is early. This is early in his career. Earlier, right? yeah. Earlier, yeah. No, I, mean, I did he, play like forty years. Yeah, yeah he know. he had a sixty-two year career. I get yep. it, but this is earlier in his career. I yep. I mean, I know he was lighting it up, but he was still scared of snakes. Ooh, that's a drawback because once you overcome the fear of snakes, dude, you can transcend to that next level. So I'm going to still go slightly higher for Nolan Ryan. So 217. I don't think so. Jack, you'd be wrong with 167. Yeah, that's the kind of feeling. Ba, 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 da, Boom. I, I knew that was a tough one. I got my loss, dude. <laughs> sorry i went you're looking i don't have that buzzer jack i I have my finger on that ready to go all night long i love that buzzer i don't right. like i don't like the buzzer do you i love right. the buzzer i kevin, i love the buzzer pre-show post-show during the show kevin who do you want to delegate do you want angelo to go next or do you want to how you um, feel it angelo you want to take this on or you want me to show you how it's done Please, please. All right, let's do it, Jack. Let's do it. Let's do it. All Jack, right, Kevin, you're up. You, you want to see your bench? Sure, why not? Okay. Well. Yeah. Coward. Coward. You got Steve. I like seeing these cards, though. Look at this. Lefty. So I, I'm, I must say, Michael, these cards are in phenomenal condition. Yeah. Yeah. I have, I have a great story. I have a great story about this, which uh, uh, I'll tell you about. And, uh, um, I'll tell you about it afterwards, but it, it's actually, they, it, I, I got a great deal on these. Th this uh, is your own PC then? This is, this is, these are all my cards. Yeah. Wow. Um, he became a, uh, an announcer, Steve Stone. Is, I think he, is he still with the Cubs? I believe he still is. We've talked about him. Yeah. Cause he was with Harry Carey for a while. Yeah, he's been with him for like a good, like 20 years then at least. And for the Expos, Woody Fryman. Like, is, uh, is he Travis Fryman's? happy oh he might it might be i i, I doubt it but but uh it'd be a good one to look at. i want to hashtag do the research because i have to I, you know, i'm playing this game here I, you know, all right we've, we've talked about this man before david right. letterman called him a fat tub of goo when he was pitching for the atlanta braves oh, this is terry, terry Forster. Forster. yep wow <laughs> terry's actually on letterman too later that's good that's, that's right that's on youtube he looks um, like the villain of an early 80s action movie. He does. Yeah. He does. He's like, no, I have kidnapped your daughter. <laughs> uh, and Bumpus is Jones is going to save the day. Hell yeah, yes. dude. Hashtag Bumpus. Oh, uh, Tom Seaver. Tom Terrific. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, Tom Terrific. Sorry. Jim Palmer. Oh, wow. That ooh, All right. Orioles Hall of Famer. There's my battle right there. That's the one. If I tank, that's gonna be the one. And he, this this man also snuck in the Hall of Fame as well. This is Burt Blylevin. Oh yeah, mm. as a right. pirate. I don't remember that guy. Pirate. pirate. I don't either. Wow. Well, see, he was a pirate for one year. You might be right. You <laughs> might be in, right. Interestingly yeah, enough, that that picture is from a photo shoot he did for a men's deodorant. So they're ah. showing. No white lines, bro. No white lines. <laughs> no, it was it was sure then because you're only supposed to raise your hands, if, raise your arms if you're sure. That's right. Sure. So Terry Forster, um, uh, as you probably well know, Kevin is a yes. uh, reliever, so he's probably not going to have a lot of wins, which he doesn't. He was uh, the AL uh, 1974 Fireman Fireman of the Year with 24 saves for the White Sox. Uh, and it was a standout for the Dodgers bullpen with 22 saves during 1978. He has 38 career wins. All right. So Tom Seaver, higher or lower? I'm going to go out on a limb here and say uh, five times higher. <laughs> I think you would be right. Um, I am curious what this number is, though, because I'm really wondering about him and Palmer. 235. Oh, wow. Okay. 235. Wow. Good. 
And I feel better about this next about this majority next. with the Mets right there. So yep. bro, this kind of the Reds. Tom Tommy Seaver had some pipes, dude. Look at those arms, dude. Those are pythons. Yeah, yeah. He is. He's he is good player. Okay, but Jim Palmer. Fire. This is a this is a higher yeah. or lower. He has a lot of wins too, so that's why I'm thinking about it. I might I might do something that might make Jack upset. Oh, that's fine. I might do go it. the I might I might I might go the bench. Okay. <laughs> but let me think about it because I either be a man. Hey, you're wearing a you're wearing a yellow. I'm a shirt. yellow. I'm a, a, uh, don't call you, me yellow. Your yellow belly's already showing, kid. Don't go you ahead call and, me yellow. Go ahead and go, Junior. I'm going to say slightly lower. Slightly lower. It's going to be close. It's going to be close, but I'll still say lower. To 235. 225. I knew it was close, but not that close. Oh, my that God. That is that is super close. I knew close. it was close. Nice I knew my run. head had more overall, and I'm like going, hopefully he's ahead of him. So, uh, Burt Blylevin, higher the, or lower than 225. For the lead. Well, oh, it's definitely lower. Yeah, he, he had a lot of wins in his career. I think he had like, like the two seventy five range, but definitely doesn't have more than Jim Palmer. I wouldn't think so either. One forty eight. Oh, already one forty eight. All right, one forty eight. I hate you, Kevin. It was <laughs> from what country is he from again? Can you look it up? Because I know he's from like a European country. He's from like, does it say where he's from on there? Yes, it says he's from Zeist, Holland. Yes, I couldn't remember. I was thinking Norway. I'm like, oh, there you go, Holland. There Make, you go. Making his summer home in uh, Villa Park, uh, California. Yeah, wow. I, say, I knew he was a local wow. guy too. Yeah, <laughs> and he was a local. And he yeah. actually had a being with the Angels later when he got demoted to the minor leagues. That's right. Oh, I'm sorry. They're still major leagues then. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. So the number to beat is uh, 148. Okay. Bob Forsh. Higher or lower than 148? I, 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 I guess I'll just say lower. <laughs> I guess I'll say lower. I don't know. Hey. I could be wrong on this. Hold on, Kevin. 11 yeah. times. 11 times the Cardinals have secured a ring. And okay. you want to go and you want to go lower? Yes, because I don't think he's been playing as long as we're playing 11 at this point. All well, right, Kevin, so. you would be correct with 72. Gosh, dang it, man. That would have been super cool if I was right. <laughs> but but <laughs> hey <laughs> <laughs> but please right. you know I I say save the buzzer before I miss this, but you won't need the buzzer for me. <laughs> All right, 72. We got Mickey Lolich. Cannot believe he's still around. And yeah, not, he, not, a, not a coach for the Padres, but that, he's a that pitcher jersey for the Padres. is just amazing. I'm so, I, I mean, yeah. <laughs> It's a freaking V neck. <laughs> like, oh God, it's like, what? It's uh, awesome, he's dude. He's definitely higher. All right. Def easily yeah. higher because he's been playing for ever. Yeah. Yeah. 217. Wow. 217. Yes, 207. Wow. Yeah. I, so look at all those years with the Tigers. Wow. Yeah. Play for the Mets for a year. And now, yeah, solid pitcher. Junior. I didn't know he had over 200 wins. I didn't wow. either. So 217. I'm happy with that. I'll take it. Mark the Bird Fidrich. Well, unfortunately, I know he's only about three or four years into his career, so it's definitely lower. I, At 76, I, he took the baseball world by storm. Yeah, I think this, this might have been his last year. Something like that, yeah. Yeah. So you said lower? Yes, sir. Okay, and the number like is 45? 27. 27, that's it? Wow. Yeah, um, that, that year that we we're talking about, he went 19 76. and 9 in 76. Yep. That was his rookie year, yep. Yeah. Like he started the All Star game. Like he was a big yep. deal, and he and uh, he was on the cover of Sports Illustrated with Big Bird. Big Bird. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So the number <laughs> is twenty seven. Well, I gotta go. I gotta go. Not a Hall of Famer, but um, hey, but he had a good two hundred fifty wins in his career, so he's definitely higher. So this boy, this probably is, like one seventy five. This maybe. is one of the reasons why I got the magnifying glass. Look at this. Yeah. Like you can barely yeah. even see. Like yeah. look at all that. Oh wow, he's more. He's almost at the end of his career. Though. Yeah, he started. Oh my god, he started in fifty nine. Oh my with gosh, the, with the Senators. Jeez. And his number is two hundred and sixty four. Wow. So he is almost done. Wow. So he's he's not in the Hall of Fame, is he? He is not. And meanwhile, like Fergie doesn't have that many more wins than him either. Wow. Yeah, and again, we talked about you know Tommy John's another guy who has like 275 wins, not in the Hall of Fame. And good luck with any pitcher nowadays even getting 250. You know, yeah, I 247. Mean, yeah, um, 
Yeah, he has more wins than Fergie Jenkins. I know, right? Jim Cott. I think in the end, I think Fergie got to like 275 before he retired. Fergie played a few more years. So Kevin runs the board for a second straight week. Oh, 1980, wow. man. This is my wheelhouse, you know? Uh, obviously. I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> wow. All right. Angela, you're up, right? Angela's right. like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> now, now, watch this. Watch this. Kevin, what's what's this guy's nickname? Louisiana Lightning. <laughs> I love that nickname. I love that nickname. <laughs> That's Ron Guidry, uh, Angela. Yes. Um, yes. The um, ace of the Yankees at this time period. Really? Dick, Dick Tidro. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <man. laughs> Look at that guy. I love it. Oh, All right. It. You will recognize him. He's the father of a very famous singer. Uh oh. This is Tug McGraw. Tim Tim McGraw's old man. That's uh, buzzer, dude. No way. That's Carrie Underwood's father. <laughs> <laughs> buzzer him, Mike. Buzzer him. <laughs> no um, so um Revived his career here with the Yankees. Yeah, there's Tommy John. There's Tommy John. Friend of the show. This is uh, Raleigh Fingers. Uh, uh. I can't believe I totally forgot that he played for the Dodgers. Knuckle knuckleballer oh, Charlie wow. Huff. Yep. Oh yeah. Wow. Angelo, you're in so much trouble, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, no. I don't think that he, let's see, I'm, I'm trying to think 79. He, I, uh, so he 79, he played in the world series. I know that he's also, I think that he was also, um, he, uh, got four strikeouts in an inning or something like that. Um, this is tippy Martinez. Oh my gosh. Tippy. All right. Tippy. Yeah. Uh, I wish he was friend of the show, but I did see him in 2016 with, uh, top gun, John Talwar, um, at the, uh, MLB fan fest. This is Gaylord Perry. Oh my gosh! Wow. Heck yeah! There you go. I love yeah. So um, I, I wish he was on camera. That'd be fun. All right. So Louisiana Lightning, uh, Ron Guidry, your number is <laughs> fifty nine. I'm Oof. surprised that he doesn't have more. Fifty nine. He this hasn't point. played that long though. Right. He gave up around seventy six. All right. We're starting off with a soft toss. So fifty nine. Dick Tidrow. Still like intro, I don't know. He is not, older. Not, not a toss up as you might be saying. <laughs> well, he does play for the Cubs at this time. At at this I, time, I'm I gotta kidding. go. I gotta go higher than fifty nine. Uh, I I I think you're pretty safe. I think there. so, but I don't know. Eighty one. Okay, 81. there you go. Eighty one. Um, this is a but coming up here is t uh, a little bit is could be difficult. This is it's this seems like it might be I, I, because sure. Yeah. So, sure yeah, yeah this is this is this is a challenging matchup. You have Dick versus Tug. So, <laughs> you got <it>. wow, <laughs> bro. Oh, I, I, uh, dude, I I was gonna say the Shockmaster Tugboat McGraw, but you win, bro. You win. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I don't. Uh, let me compose myself for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get that joke from Jeffy Martling? <laughs> hey, <laughs> doesn't he the tug he can, he does, doesn't, doesn't the tug always win? <laughs> wow, dude. <laughs> he was a reliever, so who knows? But he's been a reliever for like ten years. I can't stop it. I can't, I can't go with any other answer than higher. Right. I'm just let me finish. Let me just say he's good at finishing what he's doing. <laughs> so, all right. Why so, is he closer? Oh my God. I can't believe why it. Is he closer? So 81, is, 81 is the number to beat. Um, whoops. Um, um, oh my God. Did you, you said, did you say lower or higher? No, you said, said higher. higher. Oh, no. 82. I don't we'll believe it. this. Yes. We'll take it. Ty, Ty goes to the drinker. Bro. 82. A I one love, above it. Unbelievable. Always, always, oh, sorry. It's like he had 81. Sorry. He won by one. Okay, gotcha. Bro, sorry. always bet on the tug. 
<laughs> what well, we wow. learned here tonight, boys and girls. That is impressive. Michael, I'm gonna do, Michael, look at me right now. I'm gonna do the, <laughs> Michael, I'm going to do the Tug McGraw spot. That was his spot. Yes. He had the glove and he pounded against his chest. That's right. That's right. Oh, you, yeah, he pitching. won the World Series that year. Yep, 1980, yep. Uh, so, uh, against uh, uh, George the Brett's Royals. Royals. That's yep, it. Exactly. So, 82 and, is the number to beat. Tommy John, higher or lower? Uh, I'm going to go higher than 82. I would say oh, so. yeah. He had a very story career. Yes, sir. Um, at this time, he only had 100. Well, he had 192 wins. So, as you hey. see, that, that one oh, on the disabled list. Yeah, 192. There it is. Tommy. The Tommy John surgery. Yep. So 192. And he also makes a solid, solid set of underwear, Tommy Johns. <laughs> yes. Thanks, Tommy. He made a comeback. Uh, yes. Raleigh Fingers. What was it? What's the number? 192. Uh, 192. Uh, Raleigh Fingers has less. Good I would I, I would think so. Uh 90. 90. Oh, he has more. He has more. He has more saves than one nine one seventy something. Probably. I, I don't point. know. It might be close. Goes to anything on that. You know, it's funny because they don't. They don't have, even have saves as a category here. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> but although although the card says um, tied record by leading National League in saves for two straight years, seventy seven and seventy eight. Yet it doesn't have the saves on <laughs> here. That's so, funny. As a category, that, that tells you how much of a different time period this is. That's how yeah, unimportant totally. these still were. Yep. So 90, um, Charlie Huff here for the Dodgers. Man, this was tough. It is. It is a bit tough, I think. Yeah. Because yeah. he's about, about halfway through, a little less halfway through his career at this point. What's the number? Raleigh I'm waiting to see he's pulling a cowboy jacket. Look at for me. 90? Or Michael to react. <laughs> the old, what's how's Kevin and how's Michael's faces? <laughs> he might have he might have more than ninety at this point. I'll go higher. Okay, it'll be close. I don't know for sure though. Forty six. Oh no. Ah. Yeah. He. I mean. Um, I know he had over two hundred, but yeah, yeah, I just yeah, don't yeah, know. I, like I, easily, he has over two hundred. I just didn't yeah, know. Like, so this might have been like the midpoint of his career because I. Uh, he's. Ten, I mean, what is that? Like eight nine years, ten years in. Yeah, wow. he, he started in seventy with the Dodgers. Yeah, wow. so nine years in. Wow. Yeah, yeah. A A Angelo. To quote Bob Euchre from Major League, just a bit outside. <laughs> that, and that now was he's gonna be down. He, you know what? Bob Euchre might be batting better than you now. He uh, probably is. Bob Euchre <laughs> is right around two hundred. Yeah, that was a tough one. I, I I'm not sure what what I would have said on that way either. I, I, I didn't bad. know that he played. I thought he he would have been done by about that time. Like he no, played no, in, he played in, until I thought he, was he played until the nineties. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I remember a game. Uh, he actually pitched a no hitter and lost a game against the Angels in like 85, 86. Wow. Because one That's of those things where he walked the batter, and then. Because he's a knuckleball thrower, the catcher missed the ball, and the guy on third, guy got the third on like sacrifice, and he like ran home on the fast ball on the <laughs> knuckler. So, so imagine well, that you have a no hitter and you lose the game. <laughs> I saw this great quote. Um, it was by Johnny Bench, and uh, I can't hey, remember. Excuse me, friend of the show, Johnny Bench. Friend of the show, Johnny Bench, and uh, and the quote was, I think that they were gonna get like Phil Necro uh, uh, um, to play for the uh, Reds. It didn't. It didn't happen. Um, but like Sparky Anderson was going after Phil Necro and Johnny Bench says, um, oh yeah. Um, who, I, are you also going after the catcher who's going to catch uh, Phil Necro? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was the funniest thing. And, yeah. and, uh, you know, the whole thing about the knuckleball is that the, the thing is like, uh, they asked Bob Euchre, how do you catch a knuckleball? He goes, you know, he, he, he throws it and then you wait for it to stop. Uh, and then you pick it up. <laughs> that's how you that's how you catch a knuckleball pitcher so dennis eckersley is my first uh so hall of famer ross grimsley wow and i think in this time period michael wasn't dennis eckersley still a starter um uh, i believe he yeah, i think he was you're absolutely right yeah it was right after this that he started uh, pitching for the a's well, um, well the a's is like 80 in the mid oh yeah it was later it was you're right it was it was later you're right 
uh, later in the uh, and we were talking about him earlier. Well, we, actually, um, we're, uh, Joe Nico. I always uh, look at the, look at that. The baller. Check his pocket. Yeah, exactly. Um, from Prescott, Arizona. Oh. We talked about him before, John Denny. <laughs> <laughs> there's something um, in that mustache he's hiding something in that stash for sure <laughs> there's some gimmicks in that stash i'm telling it's a you gimmick stash dude it's yeah. a gimmick stash exactly uh you probably remember this uh guy kevin uh frank tanana oh, yeah. oh my god look very at that, good look at that hair and that facial hair wow and speaking of no what, what this man had facial hair later but did not have it for the yankees oh rich my god who's gossage i'm like who's rich gossage i never seen he, he looks so clean he does oh because he's a yankee that's why no fresh gotcha. so clean yep the uh, reds and the uh and the yankees had the oh yeah because uh jack we talked about um marge shot at one point they were talking about bringing in raleigh fingers and i think they told him you'd have to shave the stash he's like nope <laughs> good man good man yeah, exactly all right so dennis eckersley um at this point in his career has 77 oh, okay. um wins which is a kind of uh astounding actually that's what I was saying. Yeah. He was a starter. So. That's right. That's right. So 77, Ross Grimsley. Um, I can honestly say he was a, a kind of a, a bit of a streaky pitcher, but um, did not have a lengthy career. So I'll definitely go lower. I don't know. Yeah, yeah I have no idea on this. <laughs> and I am I am way off. 117 wins. Wow. Are you serious? <laughs> Ross Grimsley has 117. How is that possible? I, 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 I don't know. I don't That's know. the second time I've gone out wow. in the first uh, the first guy. Wow. First. Michael? Yeah. Wow. Exactly. Oh, my God. Wow. That is awful. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> well, is... Kevin, c congratulations. I'm Mr. 1980. You are. I mean, like, this, is, this isn't even close anymore. I, I got I to gotta figure something else out here. 80s. What a joke! You're so how did you, in the eighties? How how did you come? How did you, you how did you come to have all these cards, bro? So, uh, in the early days of Hall of Fame baseball cards, when I started going there, um, I I went in there one day and they had um, on this table. Uh, this is uh, uh, car shop Eric, not him, but his dad used to run the shop. Oh, that's right. And um, so he had this nineteen eighty like set this this beautiful cards all put together and i and i and he's, it was just for sale and he's like you know whatever and i and i and i bought it and uh, and i'm like oh my god this has like the ricky in it and it's like all these cards in it and uh uh card shop eric's dad goes oh eric likes uh uh card shop all right likes uh likes ricky anderson yep. so he took the ricky yeah. but i bought the rest of it so i still don't have and the mind ricky you the ricky is like the number one card in that set the ricky, yeah exactly <laughs> Who but, is I have, but I have it. I have the whole set. Ricky, for, Ricky it, Mondragon. What's his name? Henderson. Ricky, Ricky Henderson. Henderson. We've talked yeah. about on the show before. Yes. Have we? He's he's pretty. He's pretty. He's pretty. Uh, I know at least the player. famous story, and it was that's the week I the one week I missed entirely. Eric was in his place, and you got and you talked about Jack. Ricky Henderson got a check for a million dollars mailed to him. Was it a bonus check, Michael? Yeah, I think it was his first ever check for uh, a million dollars. A million dollars. And he decided to, to frame it. Huh. Yeah, he, he framed it and put it on his wall. He, he never he it. never cashed it. Yeah. So, well, that's so what, I mean, what would you do with a million dollar check? I, I would get the million dollars. <laughs> so, but but the, the receipt. But the A's, the A's bookkeepers had to come up to him and go, do you still have a, like a check for a million dollars? He goes, yeah, I put it on my wall. Bro, if you listen, if you're able to frame your first million dollar check, there's more coming, dude. Like, of course, I, I, he, I would say so. he did fine, bro. He did fine. I would say so. Well, and, all and right, a so friend of the show, our friend of our show, Eddie, actually, I should say, a uh, Patreon member, Eddie, said he saw right. him at the Oakland A's game last week and he said he saw him with a beautiful woman. I'm like, Ricky Henderson, you know, he has a Ricky Henderson field. Come on. <laughs> The A's field is named after him until they moved to Vegas, you know? The, the A's were just happy because um, because it was two more people in that stadium. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, they're not drawn so well these days. But I'm, I'm, all right, here we go. So let's do some these baseball days? Come on. Yeah. 
Let's do some baseball trivia to end it out. Let's test your knowledge of baseball. Definitely, we want to know in the chat um, what you uh, you what your answers are to this. So let's get to it. We got two questions. Question number one: Which Hall of Fame first baseman has the most career three homer games? The, I got my answer. Let me see if he's in the three. Let me see if he's up there. Uh, you, you already have your answer? Yeah, I do. Oh, actually, I didn't realize there's another one I could think of. But go ahead. It's okay. I All want right. to see if this name's up there. Oh, you know what's funny? The name I thought was not even up there, so that's even better. There you go. I was, gonna, I was thinking Bell oh. Lott, and I thought he was a first baseman. Maybe so, uh, uh, you're adorable. Oh. <laughs> Johnny Mize, Frank Thomas, Lou Gehrig, or Eddie Murphy? Eddie <laughs> Murray. <laughs> <laughs> Take some more of that stout, Michael. <laughs> so, which first, which Hall of Fame first baseman has the most career three homer games? Oh, Angelo going with four. Looks like. Oh, Ian going with Hall of Fame Frank. <laughs> hey, did, did you know that Frank Thomas, his nickname was the Big Herd? <laughs> did you get that out of the Baseball for Dummies book? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. They're in their eight. Hey, and if you go to Las Vegas, go to the Pinball Hall of Fame and you can play the Frank, the Big Herd Thomas pinball game. So, all right oh jack jack who are you going with i am gonna join our our mvp bubble pug with johnny the miz mize wow. <laughs> <The Miz. laughs> that's gonna be a reason not to pick him but yeah exactly i'm like no <laughs> uh angela went with eddie murray yep Angel. yep all right, and that's Evan? solid because I think he might have the most home runs out of this list. But to go different, I'll go with Hall of Fame Frank. Let's oh, go with nice. Big Hurt. Yeah, you're going with uh, with Ian here, and the answer is Johnny Mize. Wow, six games with three wow. or more home runs. Uh, not not a name on my radar at all. And he's uh, Hall of Famer. Yeah, I, Cow I, I, Cowboy I, Jack came to play. Yep, exactly. But it, it was both probably the. The uh, the Wonder Twin. Yeah, pilot. when did the Miz get his three uh his three home run game? Don't bring the Miz into this, dude. We're you talking about the Johnny Mize first. <laughs> I didn't bring the Miz into this. You brought the Miz into this. You Johnny, Johnny Mize. Miz, Mize. Johnny Mize, the most must see th uh three <laughs> home home run game hitter. Uh, they, well, and he hit his third home run when and Kevin was sixty two years old. So yeah. <laughs> I know sixty-four. You got to carry the two. Yes. Hey, oh. So that the that again, this is the fun of it. We're we're bringing uh, names that you might not know. You probably heard of this, Johnny Mize. Good, good job, Jack. Good job, Bob Hug. Nicely done. Because I done. I would have thought it was him for sure. All you right, so play. so Kevin and Angelo, I expect yeah. you to get this one. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> is this angel related? Oh no! Who is the Angels' all-time leader? Okay. Why is the most random question? Okay. Well, listen, okay. dude. If you don't know your minor league history, then hit the bricks, kid. <laughs> <laughs> We're going with Mike Trout. Uh, Sean, don't call me Chon Figgins. <laughs> this is Jim Fragosi or Eric Ibar. The two people that came to mind are on this list. There you oh, go. good job. How, where did you pull this question from? This is like extremely random. <laughs> <laughs> like you went from like what Hall of Famer to this, right? What Angels sweet list? What, what triples? Triples. Oh, Matt Sinister going with Mike Trout. Well, he knows who Mike Trout is. So. Eric Ibar. Another Mike Trout. <laughs> I'll never get I'll never get tired of this. I just want to learn how to play this baseline. You gotta be bopping, you know? 
Where'd you go? Bubble plug going with Jimmy Boy. Wow, Jimmy Pagosi. All right. He's a lot of people's favorite player. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm surprised Cody Rhodes is in his stepson's favorite. <laughs> Probably his stepson's favorite wrestler. Angela. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna go Eric Ibar. All right. Eric Ibar. <laughs> Bro did the <laughs> brother did the call back to Cody Rhodes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jack delayed. just lost it. Jack just lost it. Uh, <laughs> Jack, do you have an answer? Cody I do, dude. I'm gonna go with uh Jim. I came into the club one time, Chrissy, and your head was in the toilet. Disgusting for Gosey. That's my best mafia line. All right, because I'm that's great because he's agreeing with Bubble Pug again. Yeah. Oh shoot. Yeah, you are. Up, so I'm and and to be different, let me go. With, don't take my Chonies figgins. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and the answer is Jim Fragosi. Two for two, Cowboy Jack. I had a feeling that's who it was. Yeah. I want to make a joke, and I'm like, yeah, no. He was with them for a long time. He was like their perennial player from. What like mid sixties to like the mid to like, like when 70s? they started, yeah, yeah. He was like the Most guy on every record for the Angels. Yeah, he leaves the Angels. 70. You think the Angels are minor league now, Jack? You should have saw them in the sixties and seventies. Sure, <laughs> except sure. for Nolan Ryan, they didn't have very much until about uh, seventy nine. Jim Fragosi has seventy. Uh, Sean Figgins fifty three. A uh, Mike Trout with fifty, and Eric we'll Ibar with forty three. Garrett Anderson was another name on here, thirty five. Mm -hmm. Adam Kennedy, uh, who was a, who was a Cardinal for a minute, actually a good Cardinal, and then they, they signed him, and he, he he went back to being terrible. Uh, Mickey Rivers, which I forgot he was an Mickey angel. Rivers, yep. Um, Darren Erstad, Howie Kendrick, Luis Polonia, and Dick oh, yeah. Schofield. Oh, I love Dick Schofield. Yeah, love love me love me some Dick Schofield for sure. Yes. Absolutely. So um, that is it for the show this week. Um, again, if you want to become a supporter of the Beer Baseball blog and all of our efforts, become a Patreon member, patreon.com forward slash beer baseball. We also have uh, stickers, buttons, and beer coasters on our Etsy page. Go to beerbaseball.store. We're on uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitch. And I forgot because I actually updated this. <laughs> Like Jackie Martling, we yeah. are on TikTok. Woo. Hey, it's Woo. funny. You can have, you can have all my jokes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're we're actually on TikTok. So yeah, check us out at Beer Baseball. So um, check us out there, um, guys. Did you have any um, last thoughts? Uh, some remembrances. Some. Oh, what are you guys doing next week? And and uh, Angela, you also have Angela, a go uh, first. Let yeah. Angela, go Angela. Yeah. Away. I got yeah, a lot. so man, what what a way to kick off the road to the third year with uh, the banter and the references during during baseball card sharks. Um, but what a fun show! Thank you guys for tuning in as always. Don't forget to tune in each and every Saturday morning, nine a.m. Pacific Standard Time, for Beer and Break with Angelo. This week, I'll be opening some 2022 Tops Heritage Baseball. Oh, so nice. tune into that. Um, and uh, thank you guys again for tuning in. Um, and uh, we appreciate all your support. So tune in, beer and break Saturday, 9 a.m. And hey, if you haven't watched yet, watch the one from last Saturday. That was a winner, Angelo. Yeah, That's that was good fun. stuff. I didn't even know how to react. I was so excited. And the reason why I'm so, I was so excited, well, it's Luis Robert rookie. But can you explain um, the, the repack thing for people who may not know it? Yeah, so I um, so I got the boomstick. Uh, repack which i found on ebay i saw it reviewed on another uh youtube channel and um the i was attracted to it because it comes with one psa card graded eight or higher mm -hmm. um and then a pack of 15 rookies like a, mm -hmm. a repack of 15 rookies so i ended up pulling a gem mint 10 luis robert um 2020 bowman chrome 1990 bowman uh rookie card of luis robert gem mint 10 um, and I didn't even know how to react. Um, Luis Robert uh, or chasing Luis Robert's rookie in 2020 tops Chrome was 
uh, really what got me back into the hobby. So I'll always have a sentimental connection to Luis Robert and Luis Robert's rookie cards. So uh, it was an awesome pull. So uh, super excited um, uh, when I when I pulled that, and I'm very excited to add it to the PC. And I mean, it's you know recently went for 85, 90 bucks, and I paid thirty bucks for the repack. So I made my money back plus more on that one card. Cool. So, nice. but yeah, go back and tune into that. And then this Saturday, twenty twenty two tops heritage, and I'll be opening up. A blaster box, a hanger box, and a cello pack. Right on, right on. Who wants Ke to go Kev first? Yeah, Kevin, go for it. Because I actually have something serious I have to talk about here. So, okay. I did, well, well, first off, uh, let me get my plug out of the way. Uh, tomorrow at 7 p.m. Pacific, I'm going to do beer and break. I'm going to be opening a pint of something by Three Beers called All Hops, No Breaks. I just pulled this out. I have a wonderful cello pack of 1986 tops. With not that Scott Thompson, the baseball player Scott Thompson. Oh, wow. With one T, and I can't tell it's on the back here, but I see a lot of years. So a grizzled veteran's on the back. And I have to do a very serious and a sad beer note for our local scene. Uh, for those of you who live in the Orange County area, a staple of, for myself for sure, Michael, you've been there. I don't think Angela ever went. A place called Red Beard's Tap Room, which is right by Angel Stadium and Hana Center, they they got word that they are done. They are closing as on Friday night is their last night that they're open. Wow. If you remember uh, in 2020, when I would come with the jug, I'd be going to Red Beers every week and filling up my jug with one of their beers. They consistently have had 40 beers on draft and cans to go. And unfortunately, their industrial park is going to be completely demolished. So they're out. So Friday's their last day. So if you live in or around the Orange County area and you like good craft beer, head there They're open right now tonight. They're open Thursday and Friday night's their last night open. Go over there. Try one of their 40 beers on draft. They got to clear them all out. So get rid of all that. And they have a really good fridge full of really good beer if you want to take something to go. And as always, you support your local craft brewery or tap room with that. Because I'm really sad to see them go. They're friends yeah. of the show. Cowboy Jack, like one of the owners watches them every week on Easy History. Oh. Yeah. So yeah. I'm really sad to see them go. They've been really supportive of us. Yeah. Cheers. And and uh, cheers to Alan yeah. Scott for sure. You definitely stay in touch with them and see where I they will. land. If, if that was my uh, number. The support. Yeah. At least when I was told he hasn't know, he hasn't planned to do anything else because it was like a side retirement thing. So we'll see what happens. But cheers to those guys for have something great in the Anaheim area. Hey, which which begs the question, uh, maybe maybe this turns into a tap room uh, endeavor. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. My wheels are turning. Uh, Cowboy Jack Durango. So I need everybody out there within the sound of my voice to join us on Sundays for Hazy History with Kevin Lyon and Cowboy Jack Durango. But I have two pieces of business that I need to address. Piece of business number one. This Saturday, uh, a very, very close friend of mine, Hawaiian Lion, is retiring from professional wrestling. Um, he was there the first time that I wrestled, and I'm pretty sure he was there the last time that I wrestled. And it's at the Sun Studios in Tempe, Arizona, I mean, Hawaiian Lion is a consummate professional. We all know him. He wrestled Minoru Suzuki in Zero One in Japan. Like, brother did it. Um, it. Some of my favorite memories about Lion is he dropped me on my head every day for two weeks straight in a boxing ring in South Korea, which is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and then one night we were we were all partying a little bit, and we had... We had some Jack in the box and I kidnapped his jumbo Jack and I was taunting him and he literally choked me out to take the jumbo Jack away from me. But uh, ultimately <coughs> Hawaiian lion at one time or another, him, he, he was going through a hard time or I was going through a hard time and we ended up staying with each other for a couple of weeks and I'm eternally grateful for that time. So Hawaiian lion, good brother. Cheers. Happy retirement. Thank you so much for all the entertainment. And now comes the big announcement uh -oh. for our <laughs> third year anniversary. Oh, no. What I would like to do and what I'm going to work towards is a live 
show at Radiant Beer Company <laughs> for our third year anniversary. I'll do the work. I'll get the insurance. We're going to make this happen. I just need every one of you to believe in it, and we will make it happen. Good night. Ow, twist my arm. Ow. Yeah. I'm down. 100%. I'm down. You know, I'm down, but I'll be late. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> That's your gimmick. And the way things are going, I'll be late to my own, my, my own brewery. Bro, it's I a year me. out. It's a year out. Put in the time off request. Wow. Kevin, how can you be late to somewhere that you live? <laughs> but we are going to do this. If you all believe in it, I believe in it, and we will make it happen. One year's time. Radiant Beer Company, the first ever live beer baseball blog. Well, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this out to you. Does it have to be at our year? Or can it be or can it be before that, bro? We can do it next week. I'm ready to go. All right, let's, <laughs> all right, let's go. I'm going the right, all right. Now. So we're we're on the clock, as it were. Yeah, we're on the clock. Uh, we have one year to make it happen. I love it. I love it. Well, thank so you I to all of our once on time in the next year. Yes. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, so well, you don't have far to travel. You just get out of bed and just walk over to the room well, that we're in. Well, no, it's not that. It's just, it's just the shoot job, brother. <laughs> <laughs> call out well, thank you so day. much, everyone. Go go for it, Angelo. <laughs> no, I said Thanks. I was just saying call out sick that day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So thank you so much. We'll see you next Tuesday for another beer baseball broadcast. We love you. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye, everyone. Take care.